Oh, here we go again. <laughs> okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Weekly. As always, I'm Robo, and mm, lots of changes lately, huh? And that's okay. It's just an ever-changing, morphing entity that we have to deal with just as members of the adult collectible community. Or, as we prefer to call them, toys. There it is. It's out there. No taking it back now. Now, you may be wondering why you're seeing this on YouTube again. We'll get to that later. Let's talk about action figures first, because that's what's important. Last week, we didn't get to talk about anything at all when it comes to Marvel and Star Wars. And if you know me, that breaks my heart. But at the time, we knew that Hasbro was going to be at a Germany Comic-Con showing some new goodies. So we didn't even have to wait 24 hours before we saw the beloved Marvel or Star Wars stuff, depending on what you like. Right off the bat, let's get it out of the way because ooh, this is a biggie, at least to me. Hasbro went back and said, hey, okay, we were wrong about the Jim Lee Storm being in white. Here's our apology figure of Storm in the correct black costume. Oh man, the war wages on. I know some people think the white was correct. Some people think the black was correct. Some people think it was silver and that's okay. We all have our different wants. And Hasbro being Hasbro, they gave us the white costume. Now they're giving us the black costume. It would not surprise me at all if in a couple of months, at least after the black costume is released, that they give us a silver version too. Me, after going through many a fight about it, I still think the Jim Lee costume was black, at least initially. Plus, I just like the look of it. So that's my personal preference. You have yours, we both have figures, and everyone's happy, right? Everyone is happy! Except for the people who want silver. But again, <laughs> that's gotta be coming, right? You know it is. Inevitable. Along with Aurora, they showed the Stepford Cuckoos, which uh, we had already seen this on a list from the Walgreens computer, and this officially confirms that it is a Walgreens exclusive. So look forward to many more months of that awkward walk past the Walgreens cashier, and then two minutes later, passing back by with nothing in your hands, and they're just kind of like, ah. Yeah. Comes with three different heads to represent one of the recent appearances. Not the most recent, though. From what I heard, they're back to looking all the same. But at that time, they were going for more individual looks. But if you want them all looking the same, each figure comes with all those heads. So you get three, you get five, you can put the blonde head on, whatever your preference may be. And it may not look like their first appearances, but at the same time, it's a schoolgirl costume. Well, I would have kind of liked to seen different facial expressions, but what you gonna do. The Cerebro helmet is a nice addition, but I don't see it fitting any of these three heads. On the Star Wars Black Series side of things, they announced the Sith Jet Trooper, which looks like the regular Jet Trooper in red. Ooh, Sithy. But I'll still buy it. Don't judge me. The other reveal is a character that takes us all the way back to the Clone Wars, and that makes me happy. And <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I like future troopers, but I also like past troopers. Commander Blight looking very awesome. Again, I love troopers. I love it when they're individuals too, and I love the commanders. I just want all of them lined up. Bly and Storm are fan channel exclusives, so if you want those, you can pre-order those right now on Dorkside Toys, Big Bad Toy Store, Entertainment Earth, Hasbro Pulse, wherever the fan channel stuff may show up. But then on Monday, we got all kinds of Black Widow surprises. To go along with the official release of the trailer for the Black Widow movie, we also get a new Marvel Legends wave dedicated to the Black Widow movie. We already kind of knew about this because we had already seen Crossbones, who is looking big and buff. Head may be a little bit small, but I can deal with that. Spymaster, who takes me back to breakfast over my Pop-Tarts or my toaster strudels or my cereal, looking at the official handbook and just flipping through and going, he looks cool. Let's read the whole damn history of this character. And then that gets stuck in your head. I've never read a comic with Spymaster in it, but I need a spy master. And then Winter Soldier, who is kind of an update. We've gotten comic Winter Soldier before. It's nice to get a cool one though. I'd, I'd like to see another head without the domino mask, but it still looks amazing. But then with the trailer being released and we see all these new characters and such, Hasbro was able to officially give us pictures of some of those characters. Of course, there's gonna be a Black Widow. <laughs> it's The movie's about Black Widow. Different costume, different look, but for some reason looking at this, it takes me back to one of the earlier Avengers Black Widows, and I think it's because in these pictures, the face printing doesn't seem as realistic as what we've seen. These may be preliminary shots, they may be bad shots, they may be touched up or something, these may be just prototypes, I don't know. But I know the photo reel doesn't like to photograph really well sometimes, so maybe we're seeing that, and then when we get closer to release, 
we'll see a better scans. But until then, I'm holding out hope. Yelena Belova is wearing kind of the same costume as Black Widow, except in white. Which is also a bit of a hint at her future, because if you know the comics, you know where this goes. But this may also be a hint that we'll see a figure of Natasha in the white costume, because we also see that in the trailer. Just swap the heads. There you go. Taskmaster is one of my favorite characters in the comics, just a cool ability, and to see him cross over into the MCU, I couldn't be happier. But I see where they were going with it. It's a realistic update to his costume. As much as I love the classic costume in the comics, if you saw that in real life, it'd be like, hey, trick or treat. So I'm okay with this in that aspect, but it also kind of looks like extreme paintball. They could have adapted the Udon design pretty faithfully and still come out with kind of a more realistic look. But what do I know? The shield does seem awful tiny though. And speaking of tiny, what happened to Red Guardian's beard? What? No! In the trailer we see Alexi as very scraggly, long hair, long beard. On the figure though, he looks much more well-groomed in the cranium hair department. Also, no mask, which is a huge, huge bummer because when he slips that on, that's awesome. We can probably chalk this up to the usual use of preliminary art concept sketches, which is usually what we see whenever Hasbro wants to get figures out at the same time as the movie or before. There's just too much lead time and too many changes can be made to the movie as they go along. So it's not 100% accurate, but I still like the look here and I'll still buy it and I'll still buy the apology figure later on that is more accurate that I hope they make and then I'll still be happy because I've got sucker written right across my forehead. And then for the Build-A-Figure, you go back to the comic realm with Crimson Dynamo, or at least a Crimson Dynamo. Not the look that really pops into my head whenever I think of the character, but apparently this is from a 2003 miniseries or something, a short-lived look, but it's an easy reuse of uh, Ironmonger. And since I'm not too attached to the character of Crimson Dynamo in the first place, I'm pretty happy to call this my plastic representation of Crimson Dynamo on my shelf. Have I said Crimson Dynamo enough? Crimson Dynamo. I swear at some point in the video I am going to turn this way. But <laughs> the Hasbro train keeps a rolling. I've been thinking that Hasbro was kind of caught off guard by the popularity of the Mandalorian and especially Baby Yoda. Or the child. You know, the, the 50 year old child. And maybe they were. Maybe that's why we're seeing what looks like uh, digital sculpts or very early prototypes of the child. They were like, holy shit, we gotta get something out right now. Come on. Maybe it's a last minute rush job to play on the popularity there. We are getting a Star Wars Black Series Baby Yoda that stands a little over an inch, comes with a cup, comes with the knob off the lever in the ship, and then comes with a frog or a frog-like creature. <laughs> a meal. How's that? Seeing this without any big accessories, guaranteed we see a Best Guard Mandalorian later down the line who comes with a floaty crib. That'll run you about $10, which may be why they're not putting any kind of big accessories in there. If they had done this on a regular card with the crib for 20, 25 bucks, <laughs> all of fandom come down upon them. But as is, I think it'll come in a box about the size of the Porgs, which is so small, so cute. But if that's not enough for you, and for a lot of people it's not, Hasbro is also releasing a 7.5 inch talking plush baby Yoda. That's gotta be life size, right? Why is this not under my Christmas tree right now? That'll set you back $25, but that's a small price to pay for the warm fuzzies. But if that's too much for you, there's also a 6.5 inch version that doesn't talk that runs you about 20 bucks. It seems kind of weird to have two products so close in size and price, but the talking one feels like much more value. I don't know, I'm not a marketing guru, but hey, more the merrier. All three of these are set to release next May, what, could it be the fourth? Hmm? Ah, feels good to turn this way. I was getting sore. This week Mattel revealed their Masters of the Universe Origins Orco on social media and cool, no big whoop. I got the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive Origins He-Man and Prince Adam and they're nifty. I'm good with having just those, but I don't think I'm jumping into the whole line. I'm more of a classics filmation type guy, so I'm happy in that aspect. But this Orco... This Orgo may come home to the Robo Cave. This may be the most accurate translation from screen to plastic for this character. And because his build is different from 99% of other characters in this property, 
the Origins articulation won't look out of place on my classic shelf. That's the plan at this point though. I don't want to buy this and go, well, this other Origins figure looks pretty good. I don't need another line to buy. Stop it. Give me Orko and I'll go along my merry way. The Kyoto Amazing Yamaguchi DC Wonder Woman was revealed at a show a while back and we automatically knew it was going to be amazing. It definitely follows the same aesthetic as the line, which makes sense because <laughs> that's the whole point of this line, but it's very stylized, which may turn some people off. That seems to be the whole basis of this line. Either you love it or you hate it. And that goes for both the aesthetic and the Revel Tech joints. <laughs> the Revel Tech joints, either you deal with them or you hate them with the fury of a thousand suns. Although this series has been evolving a bit when it comes to the joints, they're not so revel techy. Posing and working with them has become a lot more tolerable than some of those earlier figures. And getting more promotional picks, Diana looks awesome. She's gonna be able to hit all the poses you could ever want. But showing off all the accessories are, is just another whole heap and helping of frosting on top of an already delicious cake. First up though, the lasso looks to be a solid piece that is stuck in this position. And you pull it out of the hands and it stays like that. Two loops, one running across. It makes for an awesome pose, but it's very limited in its uses. But missing from the accessory picture seems to be the hooped lasso on her hip that's in most of the pictures here. That seems to be removable for when she is holding the lasso. And if nothing else, you could get some scale rope or thread and <laughs> accomplish the same thing, kinda. But the rest of the accessories are all uphill from there. The usual assortment of hands, it comes with three faces of Mph, aha, not on my watch. I can't find anything that says it, but it does appear that the eyes do move behind the faceplate. There seems to be just a little bit of too much plastic and kind of a gap there. But don't quote me on that. I've been wrong before, many times. She has a sword, she has a shield, she has a cape, but my favorite seems to be the effects. Two of them looks like she's deflecting shots, blasters, something off her bracers, and the other two look like she's clanking them together. I know they're fairly simple effects, and I shouldn't love them as much as I do, but I do because, I don't know, it just adds to the value, both money and play. So there's nothing to complain about here. Wonder Woman will run you about $70, and she's set to release next May. Thanks to Paternia.com on Instagram, we get our first look at the Jazzwares Fortnite Legendary Series Skull Trooper in white. Seems to be a variant that's just out there. I mean, Jazzwares doesn't like to promote their stuff before it actually releases, and it's kind of a cool feeling to see pictures or go to the store and go, I didn't know about that, what the hell? But that's completely different from every other toy company out there. I'm not saying it's bad, <laughs> it's just different and fun, but at the same uh, I just got these, I need more, ah, what, ah. And to prove it was planned all along, apparently the back bling that comes with the white Skull Trooper is for the purple Skull Trooper, and the back bling that came with the purple Skull Trooper in wave one goes to the white Skull Trooper, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jazzwares. This is hitting the states right now along with Series 3 of Peely, uh, Molten Battlehound, Rust Lord, and Raven, along with the missing Series 2 Valkyrie. That's a lot of Fortnite figures. And I'm okay with that, because holy shit, this line's good. One of the highlights of last San Diego Comic Con, at least when it came to the Mezco booth, was the 112th Collective Popeye vs. Bluto. I'm not the biggest fan of Popeye, but I'll be damned if that figure is not one of the best Mezco offerings in the 112th Collective line that I've messed with, if not all my action figures. So seeing Bluto made me happy in my toy regions, which is somewhere right here and somewhere right here. Surprised they put the setup for pre-order this week and they decked it out. They did an amazing job here. The Stormy Seas Ahead deluxe box set just pairs the bitter rivals against each other from the beginning of the fight to the finish. Cause I hate me spinach. Both look great, but they're also both packed with all kinds of awesome accessories. We already know the Popeye figure itself is awesome, but this time around he comes with white pants and a blue shirt. Comes with an assortment of extra pipes, you know, in case you break one or lose one cause they're really small. Four different hats, hands, compass, spyglass, Two different spinach cans, one intact, one smashed. Duffel bag, and then probably my most anticipated addition is the head that looks like Bluto just beat his ass, but we all know what happened. Popeye won, 
Yeah. Oh man, that Bluto's where it's at with this set. Mainly because we already have a couple of Popeyes and Bluto is the new addition. First up, he's large. And because I already pre-ordered the set, he's mine. Okay, I may have watched that movie way too much back in the day. <laughs> Bluto comes with a real metal kettleball and wrench. Ooh, I love me some metal. A gaff hook, several sets of hands, and two head options. Including the, I was kicking that guy's ass and suddenly he pulled out a can of green leafy crap and I couldn't keep up. Did I mention the proportions? Because him next to the Popeye figure, he's large. The set is not an exclusive, so you can order it wherever you want but it will run you $165. I don't know, it seems like a lot, but there's also a ton of accessories in here. And in fact, looking at the pictures, in the accessory picture for Popeye, it doesn't actually show the raincoat, but it's shown in some of the action pictures, so I guess that's included too. That's on top of being two Mezco figures, one of which I know I already love. So, $165. Gimme, gimme. I get Bluto, I get another look to my favorite Sailor Man. Yep, I'm in. I can't help it. I just, I, I am what I am. And that's it for this week. At least I think that's it. If I miss something, we'll pick it up later. As always, if you want a better look at the pictures or more information, links to pre-orders, all this will be on the Foosh Front page on Saturday at noon. Also, you may be wondering why you're watching this on YouTube on Saturday. It's because there have been changes. The last weekly you saw on YouTube, I was... I was pretty pissed off. Things were kind of... And like I said, in that video, I may have been jumping the gun, but if I hadn't done that, I wouldn't have found other avenues and other options out there. But now this week we're hearing more. I've actually been in contact with a couple of lawyers who are like, they can't just do that. They have to go through this process. And I'm like, oh, well, that sounds more manageable. The FTC seems to be constantly trying to be less vague about their stuff but on the youtube side of things who knows who knows but if you go back i did say i was going to keep my thumb up with youtube's butt in some form or fashion be it a chair or more information come along and ah, i don't know i'm still a little bit leery of putting actual toy videos on but the weekly is this ugly mug talking to you about pictures and stuff. So I'm not sure all reviews will go back up on YouTube because, man, they like going back to my old videos and marking stuff for kids. If it has to do with Spider-Man or My Hero Academia, stuff like that. I was wrong in the last video that you couldn't change that stuff back to Not For Kids because I was working in the classic studio, which apparently doesn't have a lot of the options as the new studio has. They change stuff so they can get you. That's how it works. But to go back to my metaphor, the revenuers don't have quite as many guns as we thought they did, and they're not looking for as many things as we thought they were. So I'm moving the steel kind of back to the same area. We'll see what happens. As I've already discussed with the Foosh Plus, the Foosh Patreon, stuff will still go there first. Just, that, that's how it goes. And then the weekly comes to YouTube, and still goes to Roku, and still goes to Amazon Fire, and still goes to Vimeo on Saturday. When this first happened, I thought YouTube was it. I mean, I was coming around to the idea that YouTube wasn't the only option, but at the same time, that was the only place I was posting, and so it was like, what the hell am I supposed to do now? So coming back to YouTube may piss off a few people, right? I said I was leaving but I didn't say I wasn't coming back. It was more of a wait and see type thing. You even go back to that video, there's a question mark at the end of it. So yeah, this option has opened back up at least a little bit for the time being. Again, see what happens. We may be all riding this motherfucker down into the flames here soon anyway. We have the plus, we have other options, we have other avenues. It's not quite as scary as it was, but I'm still <laughs> I'm still keeping my guard up. So if you enjoyed the weekly, comment, like, subscribe, uh, <laughs> whatever the platform you're watching this on does down below. I don't know. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh.